Hey guys, today, like we promised, we're getting the cylinder heads off the 672 that we dropped the zip tie down in at skip time and we took the cams. Um, this is a sure way to test this, is if you set your crankshaft back to top dead center and take your timing belt off and take your cams off, naturally your valves are all gonna shut, okay? Has to work that way. And if we look down in here, see if we can really get down in there pretty hard to get an angle that the camera likes try to zoom that in for you maybe I just can't well, let's try that Brent yeah it's just really hard still to get a shot of this but like these valves are hanging wide open it looks like kind of so I don't know if you can see but that's not on the valve seat anymore so I can get it to focus and another thing we can do here in a second is we're gonna just take the spark plugs out and put a light in there and you'll definitely be able to see that there you go guys so that should really illustrate these bent valves um, I just stuck a little cheap pen light in the spark plug hole and you should not be able to see I mean you can see like a gap in there that you could put a pencil through almost and it's the same story with number three and number five so all three front valves are ridiculously bad that's shut I mean look at that look at that screamer right? jeez that's ridiculous that's terrible <laughs> so we'll get the back head off and well, I'm getting, yeah, Prince. Don't know if Prince wants his head in there or not. We're gonna get the back head off too. I mean the spark plugs, but I'm certain both of them are just as badly bent. Uh, once we get the turbo set up off, because we're gonna have to take these heads to the machine shop to get them decked at least. Um, we're gonna look in the exhaust ports, but um, I don't really have a big hope that they're gonna be any different. So stay tuned. Okay, so we got the turbo kit off, at least the front head, and I do not, in fact, see any light coming through at all so I mean obviously the heads got to come off no matter what it's clear that this engine was only capable of firing on at maximum three cylinders once we get the back head looked at we'll know but maybe the front exhaust valves are okay what we'll do when we take this apart is we'll put a valve in our lathe and then we'll just put a dial indicator on it and spin it and just make sure it's actually round but I would think light would escape that most likely if they were bent. It sure did on the intakes, so that's a little bit of good news. Um, well, here's some more good news. Um, we can see there that on the rear cylinder, nothing is stri striked uh, near the valve reliefs like you'd see if a valve hit it. Uh, try to get the back too, Brent. Yeah, it's kind of tough. We, our little piece doesn't like flex. So you can see there's absolutely no contact with that whatsoever. Um, let's see for giggles here. Let's check one of the front ones. Get in there. There we go. Um, that might be a sign of it right there. I'm not positive on that. Let's keep going around. Oh, yeah, right there. So you can see the damage to the piston, and that's nothing that's going to impede any kind of running operation whatsoever. Uh, but you can definitely tell that the, um, I'm kind of mixed up on my orientation here, but that's where the intake valves would have probably hit. Uh, let's check the next cylinder. That's actually not quite the hit that I even mm, expected it. A little bit of this so we can... Yeah, we just got a really nice depth tech thing here. Endoscope. Works pretty good, actually. Yeah, you can see right there, you can see that scarring just where that valve hit that and it does not take a lot to bend a valve as you can see um, I I, maybe a little bit right here right there you can see the carbon got knocked off in that one little spot so let's check number one let's kind of get it all the way around kind of tougher on this cylinder this might have been trying to hit and it's extremely fuel soaked. Yeah. Can't even see the valve release necessarily on that one. Uh, that piston also may be so high up yeah, that it's hard to check. Kinda... 
So let me rotate. We don't have enough the motor. Room. Yeah, let me rotate the motor just a little bit. We'll bell know. The way the bend them. Oh, well, there we go. So watch inside that piston hole with that. I'll hold this. You go ahead and hold the endoscope. I zoomed out a little bit. Let me get zoomed back in. On the camera here. Oh, that's not what I want to see. There you go. So let's go ahead and move this. There, there we go. go. See any damage? Yeah, you know. right there. Yep. You can see, I'll try to focus for you. See some damage right there. And then if you rotate, I bet the opposite one is. Also, yeah, that's banged yeah. up pretty good there. Scroll that around a little more. Yep, let me get it. There we go. Yeah, you can see some hitting there. Um, now that we can move the pistons, you, this is, I think we couldn't check number four. Yeah, so I don't see anything so far. And this one looks like it was firing still. I mean, the car was obviously running. We did drive it here barely. So I think it was hitting on the rear three cylinders. Yeah, just get back to those valve reliefs. Maybe I'll go down a little further. Yep, that looks perfect. Let's check this number two cylinder. The engine on 67.2 is one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Rotator a little. Hold on, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> zoomed in. Let's we zoomed in. Oh, I gotta go all the way around though, cause my nuts oh, yeah. just kind of loose. Hopefully we don't hit your camera. Oh, we're getting an extreme close up. <laughs> interference camera. Yeah, interference camera. That looks good. What about there? Um, I think that's okay. Maybe it touched that. I'm not positive. I don't think so. The other ones were a heck of a lot more obvious. Yep. Yep. So, so far, so good. We may only have six intake valves bent out of all of this. We're going to do a leak down on the rear head uh, so we don't have to take the turbo and the manifold off necessarily. Uh, and if it passes the leak down, we'll just go from there and we'll take the front head off and we'll get it repaired. Well, we got the lower intake off and now it's more clear than ever how you can see the valves are bent on the front head. And if we go into the spark plug hole with some light, you easily see the bendage on that. So it's kind of what we noticed before, but the rear might be okay. So we're getting no light leakage at all. Doesn't appear to be bent. We endoscoped the pistons earlier and looked good. So what we're gonna do is do a leak down test on the back head. And if the back head's good, we're gonna leave that on. Cause that'll save us head gaskets, that'll save us having to get this head decked. Um, and I mean, it's just wear and tear on everything. There's no point in really doing it. Uh, but we'll do a leak down test to make sure we're not leaving a bad head on this engine. And uh, we're gonna get the front off here. There's hardly anything left to take off. We just really gotta do the head studs. And uh, we'll kind of show you the valves bent from there. And then we need to measure our valves and get the right replacements. There you go. So we got the head off, and it's just like we kind of expected here. All the intake valves are bent. See there, clearly, you know, it doesn't take a microscope to see that problem. Same thing here. You can see the scuff marks on the valves where they contacted the reliefs and the pistons. And there you go. And so the exhaust looked good. Um, I will take all the exhaust out, and we're going to put them in a lathe and put a dial indicator on to make sure they're good. But it looks like we may be able to get away with these six intake valves. And then this cylinder head does need to be very lightly decked uh, because the fire ring gaskets put a 2000s indentation in the head. That's how they bite it and seal so well. And uh, we can also see those were sealing very well. So I see no signs that anything escaped that combustion seal. It's looking good. So we'll come over to the engine.
same story here. Um, you can see a little bit of a ding on each piston valve relief on the intake side only. And so we talked to Ray, he said, don't worry about it, just leave them alone, be perfectly fine. The exhaust looks fine, uh, the gasket looks fine. Um, theoretically, I think a fellow could reuse this, but for the labor involved, we're not going to, and we're gonna swap this gasket out. Um, but sure looks like it's doing its job to me. And uh, this is pretty good news. As I said, we'll do a leak down test on this rear head. And if that passes, then the front head is just going to be the only one that needs repair. So wish us luck on that leak down test, but we'll be updating you later with that. That's fine, I got it. Well, same story as we talked about before, but we took the gasket off. The gasket looks perfect. I really do think it could be reused, um, but we're not going to. There's no ridge on the cast iron block because the block is so much harder. Uh, and you can also see the perfect ring here. So there's been no combustion, leakage, anywhere, anything like that. This, however, is seems like pure fuel. So we're going to do some science. Let's try this out here. Let's see what a fuel injector firing on a cylinder with no compression does. Yeah, okay. And to be extra scientific, here is a dry one. Probably still burn pretty good. See there, that did not ignite with the energy that the ethanol soaked one did. And uh, yeah, but nothing's really hurt here. This is totally fine. We lucked out on that. Um, you're probably not going to hurt a piston breaking a timing belt, but you can if they're cast, especially. But these forged pistons from Ross that Ray put together for us are very stout. Um, we're going to just clean this up, you know, and we'll take a little bit of white scotch bride or something like that and just wipe this deck down, but everything looks good. Uh, cross hatch still looks excellent. This is after, you know, a short year, but a year of racing. And, uh, we're going to put some oil on this right away in case some coolant got in here. We did drain the block, but sometimes coolant gets in there. And also that ethanol, it's not a good lubricant either. And so, but yep, everything's working good. We hopefully get that uh, cylinder head uh, decked up at Baldwin Race Engines up here uh, north of Fruitland, Missouri. And they said they could do that for us. And hopefully they can get that done next week and we'll be getting this back together. So don't let slip up like this discourage you. A lot of times you're going to find out it's really not that big a deal. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of labor. Okay. But this is a hobby, right? So just try to enjoy it. You know, take it at your own pace, but don't just do nothing. You know, just do a little bit every day if you have to. And we're going to get this right back together. Revenge Performance is the place to get the parts and the advice to help right the wrongs on your vehicle. We partner with the industry leaders in parts distribution and warehousing to get you the best possible prices, the widest selection of parts, and the fastest shipping. With our real-time inventory on our website, if we say we have it in stock, it's ready to ship from us or from our many national distribution partners. With hundreds of thousands of parts available, I guarantee we can get revenge on your ride.